I'm going to demo the Superfill macro product that we have, and uh, we've got some major improvements to the product that we'll get to a little bit later on in this video. But I uh, just want to illustrate uh, the purpose of the product, and if we were to look at this tile that I have over here, just to give you an idea, we've got a piece inside there, that red piece has a lens on it, so it has some transparency applied, so that when, when we move it around, we can see through it. Um, now the purpose for the macro is to solve an, uh, a long-standing problem where we can't use uh, filled items that have transparency. And uh, just to illustrate here, we're going to export this. Uh, Control Shift S in my case will allow me to save it uh, from CorelDRAW. And I've chosen Pattern File as the type and select it only. So it's just going to save out that tile. I'm going to overwrite uh, the file I have in my folder there. And now, basically, just to try out this tile, we have to go through that step every time using Corel's infrastructure. And if we want to put that in here, uh, I'm just going to press the G key and go to Full Color Pattern. And then in this window, I can go to Other. So you can see it's a bit of a, a journey here to, to just get to it. I'm just going to pick Super Fill Movie there. And I'm going to hit Import. And you can see that it did bring it in and it put it into our uh, shape there. So that's fine. And using you know the typical uh, Corel fill infrastructure, you can do things like scale it and stuff like that, which is fine. But the biggest problem here, even though it's, we do have some vector shapes inside that, inside the new piece, is a, a big problem. There's no more transparency maintained. We have a white box that uh, come in as part of our tile. And that's, uh, for many applications uh, I found, and so have many others, that that's just not feasible. So uh, that is one of the limitations of working with full color pattern fills with the, that Corel works with right now. Um, that it introduces that white background, and it, that is also quite an inconvenience to have to export it out and then import it in every time just to try out a fill. So what's the difference with Superfill? Well, once we have these icons on a toolbar like I have over here, um, you just simply select your shape that you want to put into something else, shift that second shape, and then hit the Superfill icon, and it's now in there just that easily. And we can see that that transparency was maintained. So, I mean, how fast is that? You can also do things such as add other shapes very easily. I'm just going to fill that with green and put a transparency on it. You know what, I'm going to go a little crazy here and maybe, maybe even make a mesh fill. Drag it out a little bit so we got something totally unusual. And then make the whole thing semi-transparent and perhaps rotate it a little bit. So we've got a relatively complex object there now. I could just simply select that, shift select the second shape, and do something again that, that Corel draws fills just can't do. That is layer multiple fills within the same shape very easily. Watch what happens. So now I have the original shape inside there. I created a new complex shape that's a mesh fill with a transparency applied, and it's now in that shape as well. You know, so uh, I'm just going to make another, and we can keep doing that as much as you want. So I think you're starting to see the potential there uh, of working with vector shapes or any combination of complex shapes and putting it into another shape. Let's continue and have a look at the third page of my file here, which uh, where, where we'll explore how Corel draws infrastructure works for full color bitmap fills. All right, we have a, a tile here that's a bitmap pattern. We can see that it truly is transparent. It's 300 dpi RGB at the moment. And again, we can't easily just try out this fill inside this shape. But, but let's try Corel's infrastructure on this. I'm just going to press Control E. I'm going to overwrite a file that I have in this test folder. I'm going to choose compression in this case. Pick export. And uh, I know that the original DPI was 300 of that shape, so I'm going to retain that. And uh, I'm going to keep the transparent background. That's important to note here, so that uh, it truly is in that file. All right, so now it's exported on disk. Let's go over to the shape here. Again, if I press the G key, the property bar changes so that I can go and choose uh, a bitmap pattern as the fill. So this is one of the patterns that comes with Corel by default. There's a whole bunch in here. I'm going to go ahead and choose Other and uh, navigate over to that test folder. We're going to choose that test file that we had just exported. So I'm going to hit Import. And well, what had happened here? If we zoom in on it, you can probably see already that our transparency has been lost, similar to the full color pattern fill. So for many cases, 
we're out of luck. The, the transparency that we wanted to retain just simply isn't there. So that's, uh, again, similar limitation to pattern fills is that you have to go through this route every time to quickly try out a fill in there. And again, you can't layer fills or anything like that. But probably the biggest omission is that you can't preserve transparency. However, with our solution, you can. Let's explore that. Now with Superfill, again, you don't have to go through the bother of exporting and importing. You just simply grab the tile you want, shift select the thing you want to put it into, and choose Superfill. And it's in there. Just so easy. And most importantly, you can see that transparency is retained. And that's very important for a lot of applications. Well, we're still not done. I mean, we can add other shapes to this fill, as we've talked about before. I'm going to go down to my next page here and grab something such as this. Well, it's a, it's a combination of vector shapes. I believe there's some transparency applied to that. I'm going to shift select the shape over here, choose super fill, and it puts them in there. I'm going to flip it over, scale it down, put it in there, maybe give it a solid like, fill of yellow, and you can see how it's put it in there. And let's rotate it a bit, scale it up a bit, so you can see I'm just piling it in there over and over again. And of course, you become, it's becoming a relatively complex object here with all those transparencies and everything else inside it. Uh, one thing you'd want to do is, uh, before outputting something like this, is most likely convert that to a bitmap with, with transparency. And that's just not a big deal to do. Just go to Convert to Bitmap, choose the color model that you want, the DPI that you want, and um, it'll just take a moment to calculate that. and basically simplify that uh, from being so many complicated objects down to something that your output device can handle more readily. So that's how that works. Now we're going to explore the new features with um, uh, the latest version of Superfill. Now if you're one of the many lucky owners of the previous version of Superfill, you'll be really happy to hear about our new enhanced option for the product. And by the way, this is free for you folks. Um, basically, let's go back to familiar territory. We're just going to put this shape into our other shape here like this, and then use the new option. And well, it looks like it, you know, the same function that worked for the initial super fill. But basically, all of these fills, or all of the tiles in this new shape are clones of this shape over here. So what happens if we scale this up a little bit? It changes the pattern inside the other shape. Now this is, is very cool because we can apply things like rotation to our master shape and it will, and it will, and it will change how the, the new shape looks quite dramatically. And again, we can also put this shape inside there as well, just like we did before. Just going to put that in there. And I'm going to squash it inwards and then scale it up and then rotate it. And you can see how it updates in that other shape. I'm going to uh, I'm going to delete that one, and it deletes it from the other shape as well. I'm going to give this a, a fill of blue and a little bit of transparency. Get rid of the outline. I'm going to put it inside there. So we've got some circles there now. I can s make them smaller, make them larger, just like that. And again, if I if I amend the transparency of our master shape, it'll update inside the other shape over there. So there you go. And anytime that um, you need to break the relationship between the master and the clones inside the other shape, that's what the third icon is on the toolbar. It'll just simply select your master shape and then press that button and then all of those cloned items are independent of the master shape. Let's go ahead and look at how this might uh, work for bitmaps. So we have our pattern here again. I'm going to simply select it. I'm going to scale it down a little bit first here. Shift select our shape we want to put the tile into. Press the new option there. And again, we have the option to scale it up a little bit or a lot. And it starts to, you know, massively tile over the other tiles inside there. We can skew it, rotate it, and you can see how it's updating inside there. Um, I'm going to go back a few steps here something like that. And again, we have another shape here. I'm going to fill it with red uh, or maybe a blue just so it's really obvious what's going on. I'm going to shift select our shape, put it inside there, 
well, I'm not happy with that color, so I'm just going to choose a new color over here, and you can see how it updates inside there. If we were to rotate it, or stretch it, or do anything to it, it's going to update, update inside of our other shape. Let's go ahead and create a copy of that. I'm going to make it red. Shift select that piece. And now, oops, now what we can do is simply scale this down, and, or scale it upwards, and see how it looks relative to um, the other shapes inside there that have already been tiled. So I think you can see the pow power here. I mean, again, I can always go back to any of the other previous master shapes, and they'll update inside there. I can scale this down to nothing, upwards, anything you want to do. So adds great power to Superfill. Let's do one more quick example. We have a shape over here that we're going to be tiling various other pieces inside it. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit, shift select that, that uh, new shape, and now we have those inside there. But with, because they're, we're using a new cloning option, we can rotate these, we can squash them, stretch them, and see them update inside there. And let's try putting some of these in there. See how that looks. Well, I'm not happy with that, so I'm going to scale it upwards. Well, that's too much. Let's change the transparency on that so that it's more transparent. And you see how it updates instantly, so you can see how it looks relative to what you'd put inside there. How about this one? Not too bad. I'm going to scale it up. So we're starting to get a wide variety of patterns here by, by putting different shapes in there. What if we were to rotate that a little bit? Scale it up a little bit. How about this one? We've got another, uh, some kind of a pattern there. Let's say I wanted to change the color of that. And you can see that it's so quick to, tr to create abstract patterns and uh, see how they look relative to other things. So that's the demonstration of Superfill in general, especially with the new additions to the product. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.